Gary is, I'm going to start, um, Gary should be coming. Um, okay, I will have to ask everybody um, to sign in as Carolyn, she knows how to spell your name. Um, hi, Gary, come on in, let's start the meeting. I'm going to just ask everybody to state for the record who they are. Hey, Gary. <laughs> Uh, tonight is August, uh, Monday night, August 22nd, 2016. We have a um, good crowd here this evening. Um, what I'd like to do is right now it is 630 to, uh, 632. Gail, Gary, Donna, and you are? Carolyn Murray. Uh, David Cedroni with WATD News. I'm out the boil from the board of selection. David Antoine, PAC TV. Neil Wynn, PAC TV. Okay, and um, Rob was here, so when he comes in, I'll ask him to introduce himself. Donna, can I please state that I am also taking my own recording? Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Um, please note that this meeting is being made available to the public through an audio recording, which will be used to ensure an accurate reading of record of the proceeds produced in the minutes of the, the minutes of the meeting all comments made in open session will and are being recorded uh, with that being said I've got some payroll there Gary for you to uh, uh, sign there okay um, I did have a um, couple of items here um, there was a question that came up in a correspondence in regards to the July 25th minutes as they were transcribed. Um, I don't have that on the agenda. Um, I did ask that those be sent over to me so I could verify them um, from the public recording. Um, if there were any differences, I did not get an answer back. So. At this point in time, um, do I need to hold off on accepting the July 25th I, meeting minutes, or we can discuss it next time? Um, I would like to give you and uh, Mr. Fine a copy of the meeting minutes. Okay. What okay. I'll do is I will. And um, on the second page is a transcribe of how the meeting started. All right, great. What I'll do is I will take a look at that and go back over the um, uh, film that we have. Um, Rob, can you state who you are and where you're from? Yep, I'm uh, Rob Adams with Pembroke Town News. Wonderful, thank you. Um, yep, and um, that nice couple over there in the corner. Um, can you state your name for the record? Kevin and Brenda Durant. Okay, um, would you mind signing in as well? Great, thank you very much. Um, are you here for Pine Tree? Yes. Okay, perfect. Um, so, uh, payroll signed. Um, I'm going to put off the July 25th minute meetings. Um, um, Donna, I would also like to include this for you and Gary. And this is in regards to a statement that was made about police report. And um, there is one thing that is highlighted there, and I will share one part of the false report. Okay, wait a minute. I, I want to. I just want out of. Um, I just want to state out of order. I, I don't want to bring this up. These are the minute meetings. So this was this was brought up in the July twenty seventh meeting. Okay, so then okay, we'll so do is we will to that we, right. So when we put that on the agenda, which we will put on a discussion of the July twenty fifth, um, two thousand sixteen. Um, I'll keep copies for Carol so that we have those. Um, other than that, the only other correspondence that we have at this point is the schedule in your files for the MBA, uh, MAHB, which will be held on November 5th. Gary, I am looking still for your application or paperwork. One. I'll get that to you tomorrow. Okay, because Lisa's going to. Okay, drop them off here. Is that the application that we filled out at the last. Correct, and then this is the schedule on uh, November 5th. I highly suggest that we all try and go. Um, I've gone to it every year since, and I find it very interesting um, and very informative. 
I'm going to turn around and other than that for correspondence, the other correspondence that we have, um, I will bring it up once we follow our minutes of the meeting. But right now, um, we're a little early. Um, Joe Webby, yes. how are you? If you wouldn't mind signing in, Joe, um, I think we can take you a little bit early if, if you're ready. Sure. Okay. Great. If you want to come on up to the table. Um, I was left um, with the permit um, and instructions that if it is approved, I can in fact sign it, and then you can do what you do uh, sure. tomorrow. Okay. Um, Gil, do you know Joe Webby? Yes, I do. Okay, I do. perfect. Yes. Nice to see you again. Nice to see you again. Okay, what do we got? Uh, this is a uh, septic repair upgrade at uh, Pine Tree Lane in number 65. And we have a, <clears throat> a pretty small lot. It's 11,000 square feet. We have a wetland on this side, and we have this very large boulder. It's a ledge outcrop uh, right here. Uh, there's a couple of cesspools in there that they've closed put in through the years. Mm -hmm. Are those and closed? Those are, no, those are not. Those, those are, are still open. Those are still open. And what they would like to do is, is obviously, we also have poor soils, so that's why this is so big. Uh, what we'd like to do is... Uh, so civ analysis was on this, right? Right, exactly. Uh, they have a three-bedroom house, so we'd like to put in a three-bedroom. Uh, we would like to ask for, I believe, four waivers. Mm -hmm. one, one to use the sieve analysis, one to keep uh, the, the soil absorption system <clears throat> 10 feet from the foundation instead of 20, and we are wrapping that with a, uh, membrane. a membrane. Yeah. Yes. Uh, the other one was to allow 37 feet to the wetlands. That was approved by the, uh, by the Conservation Commission okay. last Monday. So uh, subject to your approval. Okay. And then to allow the, uh, the 110 gallons per day state code instead of, per bedroom instead of your 150. And we're asking for that to obviously to reduce the size of this. Basically, we're asking to, asking to go down to uh, Title V standards. Mm -hmm. Joe, has the health agency seen this? Oh, yeah. 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 Lisa um, had said that. Um, she was good with having Joe present it. Um, is there a deed restriction going to be put on this because would, of the it would, it would It would require a three-bedroom deed restriction, right? Okay. okay. Do you have any concerns? Did you get any pushback from the Conservation Committee? No, they were, with it? they were happy to... Um, this is basically just street drainage. Mm -hmm. It's not really a, a, street, a stream or a swamp or anything. Okay. Nope, they, they approved So the wetlands it. is... Um, yeah, but it's a reduction of 37 instead of 75. You are 75, Title mm -hmm. 5 is 50, so mm -hmm. it's really a 13 foot reduction. Right. Okay, so the tank has one piece. Wow. And then these, I. Yeah, we're going to get filled with sand. Yeah. You're yeah. just going to fill them with sand? And, mm -hmm. Okay. It's the the soil is very poor. It's uh, it's not a sandy area. Mm. And that's really what it is. It was only. Uh, you think on there? It's huge. Six point nine. Yeah, sand. it's only fifty six, fifty seven percent sands. Yeah, fifty six point nine. Okay. Anybody have any questions? I'd like to make a motion to accept the four variances as proposed by the engineer Joe Webby on 65 Pine Tree Lane. Do we hear a second? I'd like a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 You're all set. Thank you very much. Good question about the process. Uh, yep. Issuing a certificate of compliance, how does that work? Well, funny that you brought that up. <laughs> I have it right here. Okay, the formal application has been filled out because you're getting a new septic system. You're getting a certificate of um, compliance um, instead of a um, certificate of, um, oh, what's the other one? I forget. Drawing a blank. Shouldn't do that. Um, instead of having, so it is a complete um, certificate of compliance with the new system installed. I'm going to sign off as the Board of Health representative and date it. I will leave it here in the office. It'll be stamped 
and then you will receive a copy of this for your records as well as probably an as built. Okay. Um, so once the system is installed and inspected, can we go through with the sale and all of that stuff? Yep. Then this is what you will get as the okay. seller okay. to be able to give to the closing attorney. Okay. Um, and be able to proceed, and that should be enough for the bank for the buy on the buyer's side. So does grass have to be showing? Or anything no. Like that? Does, okay. Does that no. My lawyer thought that might happen. That yeah. Happen. Sometimes, um, you know, um, and and just to let you know, I am a licensed real estate agent. Okay. So um, there are sometimes when a buyer will in fact ask that it be regraded and it be seeded. Mm -hmm. We're gonna um, take care of all that. Okay. So. You know, they just need to know that they need to run a sprinkler system because you won't be there. They've got to keep up with it. Yep. Um, and other than that, okay. you're all set, clear to go. Appreciate Mr. Webb, um, you will be you're working. You're working for this gentleman yes, right here, yes, right? Yes. So, will you be giving him the blueprints of? Or yes, you're going to be giving him his own copy, so it's not going to come from this office. No, 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 no. It's going to go directly to him. Okay. I just want to clarify that. Ultimately, he'll choose an installer. Okay. Excellent. Have a great day. Great. You. You're Very welcome. Nice Good you. luck. Okay. So that's all set. Okay. So I'm going to leave that. Uh, Gil, can I have back that copy there of what the variances were so I can put it back in this? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can I take a picture? I wrote on it. No, no worries. You can take a picture. I'm, I'll leave it right here. Okay, that's okay. That's okay. Um, okay, so what we're going to do is um, right now I'm going right into Carolyn Murray. The first point of discussion this evening um, is in regards to a new complaint that was filed with the Attorney General's office, um, I believe last week, in regards to the open meeting by uh, another open meeting violation. Um, in your packets or your folders, Everybody should have a copy of it. Um, it actually begins with the minutes of the meeting, which is where this complaint started from. Um, so there is this page, which is the actual complaint. And then attached to it is the statements that were said that is in question. So Carolyn, I give you the floor. Okay, so if everybody has received copies of the complaint that was filed um, under the so-called new open meeting law, which goes back now to 2009. Uh, the complaints get filed now directly with the board that's said to have violated the law, and the board's given 14 days to respond to that complaint and um, provide some sort of response to the Attorney General's office as the initial um, action that's required. So one of the reasons we're here tonight is because we've got exactly 14 days to get a response in to the Attorney General's office. The nature of this complaint, it stems from the July 25th board meeting and um, a discussion that was had that apparently, during the course of the discussion, um, the um, complainant, Carol Morata, was discussed and she feels that this was a violation of the open meeting law because she feels she's entitled to 48 hours prior notice before being discussed at either a public meeting or executive session. So um, in looking at this initially, uh, one thing I do note is the way this was this appeared on the Board of Health agenda as Selectman Dan Trebuco discussing the Board of Health moving forward. Um, I will be providing a copy of the agenda to the to the Attorney General as part of this response. I will say that Board of Health moving forward might be something that the Attorney General looks at as not having been specific enough as to what the um, full scope of the conversation was, but mm -hmm. we also recognize that sometimes these things are hard to predict in advance as there are three board members, and in this case also a member of the Board of Selectmen who was present and perhaps the conversation um, went in a direction that could not have been anticipated at the time that the agenda was prepared. So we will want to just note for the record that going forward, we should try to be as specific as possible as we can mm -hmm. with the agenda items. 
So then we get to the matter of the complainant being discussed in the course of the meeting. And one thing I do want to note is that the mere fact that someone's name is mentioned in a meeting is not in and of itself an open meeting law violation or grounds for um, requiring someone to have 48 hours notice. As you know, under the open meeting law, there are certain conditions under which if a person is going to be discussed, they're entitled to 48 hours advance written notice of the meeting. So I'll pick on Arthur Boyle since he happens to be here this evening. And just as, as an example, if the board here tonight um, had a discussion and wanted to recognize Arthur Boyle for his years of service to the town and commend him for his dedication, etc., cetera, um, that would all, I think we'd recognize that as being a very positive and complimentary action. It's still discussing an individual by name, but it's not the type of discussion of an individual that requires 48 hours advance written notice to that individual. So it's really only when we're getting into discussion of reputation, character, discussion of charges, complaints, uh, possible discipline, th that type of thing that requires that the individual to be discussed would be entitled to advance or 48 hours written notice prior to that discussion taking place. So that being said, not having been here at your July 25th meeting, I can't really speak to how the um, discussion evolved, if you will. But as I understand it, I, I, I don't, perhaps you can have a different view on this. I don't really see the nature of this discussion as necessarily being something that involved, certainly didn't involve discipline. I don't think it involved reputation or character. Uh, and I'm not so sure I would characterize it as a complaint against, in this case, the complainant. Um, so that's what my thought is in terms of framing a response to the Attorney General's office is to say the agenda item should have been more specific as to what we thought the scope of the discussion would have been and if we thought that there was a need to provide notice to do so and that we'll work on this going forward and then also to just address the basis for which someone would be entitled to notice under the statute and so that I don't really think that this rose to that level of something that would have required written notice. But certainly if board members have any more information they want to share since you were obviously at the meeting and I'm just the bystander, I welcome any comments you have. One other thing that I would ask for is similar to with the last complaint where uh, if, if you choose to have me submit the response to the Attorney General's office, that I'd ask that I could have a vote of the board designating one of you to be the point person who um, reviews the letter with me, makes any comments that you think that might be necessary, and then off to the Attorney General's office and should go from there. Um, at this point, uh, Chairwoman and Clark, I'd like to address you. I um, have retained my own private counsel. I believe that I would like to have my private counsel take care of this. Um, to address the situation with the open meeting um, violation and with the Attorney General. Uh, if you could offer a couple of points of clarity for me, Council. First of all, let's go back to the agenda. Um, I can appreciate having perhaps a more detailed or a robust agenda, but I, I think as a three-member board, the fact that we're meeting twice a month, I think the Chair preparing the agenda, getting some suggested items from the other members, health agent, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I think there needs to be some latitude. So I have in the past appreciated not the lack of specifics, but the ability to have some latitude in each topic. So that's, you know, I'm not disagreeing with you, just throwing out a, a, a counterpoint where I think we need to have some, you know, I, I think if the agenda becomes so specific, it, it could become counterproductive and maybe strangling what we're trying to do. That sure. would just be my, my first point. Um, in terms of responding to the Attorney General, I just need some clarity from you. It was my understanding, perhaps I'm mistaken, that when there's an open meeting violation, such as the one that you have tonight, 
it was my understanding that you, as being retained by the town, that you would be responding on each and every one, but now you're maybe offering something a little different that we're supposed to, as a board, are we supposed to ask you to respond to the Attorney General? No. So it wasn't clear. No, no, no. Um, some boards would uh -huh. take it upon themselves to draft a response and wouldn't necessarily involve town council. Um, that's not necessarily routine, but it's certainly an option for the board. Um, but where the complaint is actually filed against the Board of Health, it's not an individual complaint, that typically what would happen is I, as town council, would draft the response on behalf of the board. And as we did with the last complaint, it's just to have someone from the board who looks at it, agrees as to any you know, facts that might have been um, needed to be clarified in a letter, something to that effect, that, that someone reviews it from the board, and then I sent it off to the Attorney General's office from there. So, unlike Gail, am I hearing you correctly as far as this complaint, you're asking that your own attorney that you've retained to respond to the complaint? Correct. Okay. I, I would give a different point. Of, I, yeah. I would like to see, you know, if, if it were me, I'd like to see a continuation of town council responding to the complaint. That's, that's just my... Well, here's, here's my opinion, and, you know, I, I'm not an attorney, um, and, and thank you for coming. Um, but if the complaint is against the Board of Health, then I feel that you should represent the board. If there is a member on the board that would like their attorney, can there be two attorney responses? I mean, is it, that to me would be individual. Gail's would be individual. Yours would be of the board, which would be an entity of our of us. I I I'm in waters that I don't understand. I have never seen an open meeting law <coughs> complaint that gets two responses of mm -hmm. that nature. Mm -hmm. But I can certainly understand where Ms. McSweeney may feel that she has slightly different interest from say the rest of the board given something else on the agenda we're going to discuss this evening right um but my response will be on behalf of the board as the authorized response through town council mm -hmm. if there's going to be an individual response it needs to simply be noted that it is on behalf of the individual member i i would feel more comfortable um having your response and then having Gail McSweeney's attorney put in whatever they would like. We'll put the attorneys in, everybody can get in there. Um, but I think it's important for the town of Pembroke that I Carolyn. I, I'm a, a little perplexed on why this is a board issue where this seems to be, um, it just seems to state my violation with Mr. Tribuco. I don't understand where the board comes into this because um, from my interpretation of this, it's saying that I was the one that made the open meeting violation by stating a name. It, I, I don't see anywhere on here that it says that the board is responsible. If I may, the complaint in the form itself where it says the name of the public body that is the subject of the complaint it is the Pembroke Board of Health. They do also mention specifically, you know, one particular member. Um, as we all know, the open meeting law governs public bodies and how they can conduct their meetings. We don't regulate through the open meeting law individual actions. So this is a little a bit of a combination where this discussion took place at a board meeting, so the board has to respond to the complaint. Mm -hmm. The individual does not need to respond to the complaint unless, mm -hmm. but certainly the, the individual is not prohibited from responding to the complaint. Um, but the, the Attorney General wants a response from the board because the statute anticipates that within 14 days of receiving the complaint, the board's going to discuss it, take any corrective action as a board, and provide a response. Donna, where I was unaware that the board was wrapped up into this as well because um, it was my understanding 
that this was directed just solely towards me. Mm -hmm. um, I would like if you could give me 24 hours so I could talk to council and um, see which way the council, my council board thinks that this should go. Um, I, I, okay. Right now, well, I don't have, I don't have enough information from what I'm being told. Mm -hmm because I was under, I was really under the direct um, assumption that I, this was just a something that was filed by, on me mm -hmm. through the open meeting law. Yeah, no, this general. was, this was as um, for all of us. So, um, at this point, um, I think I would like to make a motion that Number one, you have 24 hours okay. to get back to me in writing, CC Carolyn Murray. You have her email? You can always just uh, it's yeah, it's somewhere on okay. all of us. Yeah. You're 24 hours. So if you could get a response back. to respond to you, to me directly. the clerk, and? You, um, no, just send it to me. Okay. And then I'll forward it on to, to Carolyn because my motion's gonna have um, a couple of pieces to it. Now, will I be privy to seeing your motion that's got a couple pieces to it? Well, I'm gonna say it out loud. Yeah, I'm gonna say it right now. Okay. So, we're gonna agree, I, what I'd like to do is make a motion that you have 24 hours to advise with your counsel. Mm -hmm. Second portion of that, because it is a complaint against the board, which is a three-member board with a complainant mentioned, I would like to ask that Carolyn Murray proceed with a response to the Attorney General on behalf of the Board of Health for the Town of Pembroke. If your attorney advises you to go forward, by all means, okay. let there be two issues going in. Um, then I would also like to ask that Gary Fine review with Carolyn Murray the complaint as we did in the first instance. Do you, so there's three pieces to that. So there's the 24 hours, there's Carolyn making a response for, on behalf of the board in entirety, and the third piece of it is, is that you will be responsible to deal with the complaint response directly with Carolyn. Same protocol we did the last time. Same last protocol time. as before. How does that sound? Do all three pieces stand? Can I get a second? I'll give you a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. Okay, so with that being said, we're going to move on to the next um, item number two on the agenda, which actually is the Attorney General has come back directly to um, the Town of Pembroke, um, where Council felt on the first complaint um, that we had mentioned in a previous meeting that there really wasn't possibly, maybe there could be a violation. The Attorney General has in fact in a later, uh, letter dated August 10th, to Carolyn directly about the open meeting law complaint, uh, paragraph two. Following our review, we find that board member um, Gail McSweeney individually violated the open meeting law. That is their decision. Um, I do have this if anybody would like a copy. Um, I am, it is public record at this point. Um, so with that being said, not understanding what this means. Um, Carolyn is here to advise us on how we go forward with this now that they have come down with a ruling. Um, Donna, do I have that in my packet? You should, it should be from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. So, here we are with the first complaint that we went in. Um, this actually, there was an email um, that transpired between Gail and I, uh, which was the subject matter brought up 
in this complaint, which has been, um, I think we all have a copy of that, and that was provided with it. So, Carolyn, with this being said, uh, where are we in regards to this at this point? What does it mean? How do we proceed? What should we do? What should we not do? Ma'am, Tim, can I interrupt you for a minute because I've got the Board of Selectmen to decide. Yes, you may, Arthur. If we haven't gotten a copy of that to the Board of Selectmen, could we get it to Ed Thorne because there's a price to all this and the taxpayers have a right to know what they paid in legal fees and what they paid in, mm -hmm. you know, errors. Yeah. Uh, I think it's clear that uh, we need to address the uh, right. situation. Okay. I will. Gentlemen, a copy of the letter from the Attorney General? Yeah. Yep. I will make sure that Sabrina that Sabrina has it. I believe she does, okay. um, and Ed, but I will make sure. Okay. Okay? You. You're welcome. Thank you. Have a good meeting. Yeah, you too. Arthur's leaving. Carolyn, back to you. Okay, so with respect to the Attorney General's response, uh, there are a few parts of this. Um, Could one, I just make one statement? Um, at the boil, uh, Selectman Boyle was not um, put on the agenda. Um, for him to speak at our meeting, he needed to be on this agenda. And this is another thing that we're having issues about. If Mr. Boyle was going to come up and speak in regards to violations, um, it needed to be on the, on to the agenda. Even though he wanted to come in as a... It doesn't make any difference. Carolyn? If anyone wants to come in, what, what's on your agenda, and I don't have a copy in front of me, but what's on your agenda is something relative to discussion of the Attorney General's open meeting law violation, correct? Yep. Yes. So anyone from the public who's recognized by the chair who wants to discuss anything that falls under that topic may be recognized by the chair and may speak. They don't have to individually be on the agenda in order to make a comment on something that is already on the agenda. If he wanted to introduce a new topic, correct, that would be something else. Okay, and all he did was he came in to view the beginning of the meeting. Um, if this is not because it was addressed to you, if it hasn't gone to... But he made statements about... Ed um, Thorne. Us. Um, to the town. Um, Carolyn, your opinion on that? I still think it falls under the four corners of the discussion. Thank you. Okay. So the Attorney General's letter requests um, that the board release to the public within 30 days following receipt of this letter um, the May 18th email. Mm -hmm. And I believe if, if the board does not have a copy available, I can certainly make sure I provide one to you. Uh, what would be adequate would be to simply attach a copy of that email to the minutes from this meeting so that if anyone from the public should request a copy mm -hmm. of, the main, of the minutes. They can also get a copy of the email. It's also something that could be kept in the file with the Attorney General's letter as um, if anyone should make a public record request, they can certainly get a copy of that. Mm -hmm. Um, the Attorney General's Office also notes that um, we discussed some open meeting law training. And if you've, if you've got it, we have that's it. great. Yes, I, I do have it. Okay, perfect. Um, they've also noted that we discussed in response to this complaint um, coordinating open meeting law training, which as they say in their letter, um, they certainly encourage. So I have discussed with uh, the town administrator scheduling um, an open meeting law training because that's something that they might want to make available to other town boards not mm -hmm. just the board of health so we're going to be looking at some dates in the fall for that can i ask you a question councilor sure so i saw a copy of this prior to this evening this, this letter was sent to me as well as the town administrator as nice. well as Gail. And, yeah. and, yep. and yourself. Mm -hmm. And maybe I'm using the wrong word in saying a remedy, but one of the recommendations from the Attorney General was to include the email correspondence between uh, my two colleagues on the board. Uh, right. I would like to ask your opinion. 
I, I think if it were released so the public can see it, if somebody reads that email trail and I was not involved in it, so I, I don't know it maybe as well as my two colleagues, but a lot of it was referencing or discussing the topic of the letter that Chairman Bagney read mm -hmm. by our secretary, Ms. Murata. So to me, if the public is reading the email correspondence, the concerned citizen might say, well, what, what, are they t what letter are they talking about? So it makes sense to me, I have respondents between these two individuals. Well, let's go back to what the Attorney General's actually asked for on page three of their letter in their conclusion paragraph, where they say that they order the board to release to the public within 30 days following receipt of this letter Ms. McSweeney's May 18th email to Chair Bagney. So the only thing you're required to release is simply that email. I understand. I, I understand what you're saying for context, that the right. exchange. That's huge, huge for me, or for sure. the public. Sure. So <coughs> if. I just want to be clear that that's not what you're required to. You'd, be, you'd actually be releasing more than you're being asked to to release, but there's no prohibition against any, providing the full exchange. As far as the letter that was read at the May 16th meeting, by virtue of the fact that that letter was read at your May 16th meeting, that letter is a public record. I understand. Mm -hmm. So. So again, it's available for anyone who should want. If you want to put a packet together for folks who might be interested in getting the full story from May 16th through the 18th through the Attorney General's um, decision, certainly can't stop you from doing that. But that is a public record anyway. Okay. Well, I mean, I just gave one person's opinion. I mean, I'm, I'm going to throw it out to mm -hmm. uh, Gail and to Donna. Like I said, I, I think for the public, and you are correct, Counselor, it was read and, and someone could go back and, and view the, listen to the tape or see it on, on television. But I, 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 you know, if I were reading the minutes of the next meeting or watching on TV this evening or when, whenever this would air, to me that's a big, it's the big missing link. And, and I think that would help put some maybe closure clarity. or something right, or clarity, thank you, it's the C word, exactly. some clarity. Yeah, not closure, but some clarity around so the public could see the letter that generated the, the confusion e that came upon the board. Exactly. That's my opinion. Because I, this was this was a correspondence um, to the board, to the sitting board, um, two days after election, um, and the last paragraph is about I am retiring and on which date. So it is not a retirement letter. It was a correspondence to the Board of Health. So with that being said, um, I, think, I think that people are not quite sure what is in fact going on in here. Right. And for the um, level of transparency, transparency. Transparency. Thank you very much. Um, I agree with Mr. Fine in regards to releasing to the public um, not only the original letter dated May 16th, um, I think we should take it one step forward um, and then also release the email um, to the general public mm -hmm. um, that was addressed uh, between you and I um, May 18th. Yeah. which we have a, all have a copy of. It is showing where we started from and how we've gotten to where we are. Correct. So I think with the, those meeting minutes, uh, that, that documentation should be attached with the meeting minutes to be filed away into the meeting book. Oh, it will be. Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. So we're going to file all of it. Um, we are going to have a file going about complaints. Hopefully we don't have any more. Um, we're, we're learning adults, um, but I would like to go back to the motion that I put on the table. We've already seconded and agreed to that. That's the new one. This is the last one. Um, I would like to, anybody want to make a motion? Okay. I'm not, I didn't me. know that we needed it, but I'd like to make I, a I motion to include when we make a release to the general public, we include in, this, in our minutes not only the email correspondence that transpired between uh, 
member of McSweeney and Chair Bagney, I'd like to include the letter that was read on the 16th of May from Carol Murata, our board secretary. I'll, if, I'll second. All in favor? <laughs> Aye. Aye. Okay. So moving right along, um, we're just going to kind of get this all out on the table, which yep. is why I wanted to bring item number three. Are we all set with that um, yes. statement? Okay. You don't need to follow up with them in any way, shape, or form on the second portion. I do not. Okay. Number three, legal counsel demonstration um, determination. Um, since we started meeting this new board um, after elections in May, a lot of times the topic has come up in regards to the board is not um, following um, under the guidelines of Massachusetts general law. Um, we're unethical. Um, we're not doing things. We're auto autonomous. Um, it really bothered me, so I took it one step further, and I have been investigating it um, through Ed Thorne um, and with Carolyn in regards to was this was the ruling that was made in regards to Ed Thorne and the selectmen um, back in 2000 and was that in June the June twenty second yes. Was that action unlawful under not following the guise of Mass General Law? Are we still operating unethically wrong? So Carolyn was given this topic to kind of investigate for us, and she actually came back with a response. Um, it was a lengthy response, but the gist of it, um, Carolyn, um, this was the email July 31st. Um, it came in um, to Ed Thorne in regards to the delegations of duties to the Board of Selectmen. Um, you've quoted several general law chapters. I would like you for the peace of mind of the board as well as the town of Pembroke um, and the people people of Pembroke who elected us, um, can you give us your opinion in regards to the fact of have these statements, are these statements incorrect um, to the best of your knowledge? Which statements are those? Statements that we are not, um, we are autonomous, which we are, but that the um, ruling that had been made in regards to the Ed Thorne taking over the regular du daily duties of the Board of Health, um, as well as the selectmen um, taking over the trash. Um, okay, can we, because we're, get, we're, we're well, going. This I, is, these are accusations. Well, I've never discussed the trash, so right. I don't understand why that's ever come into it. My issue is the Mass General Law, okay. and the way that I feel about this right now, I've already told you that I have filed with ethics on the Mass General Law, mm -hmm. and until they come back, this is a redundant issue. This is a state. It, there's really nothing further that can be spoken about it until the state comes back with their decision. anything to add? Well, I mean, I've provided the board with the with my opinion, and I stand by that opinion. Um, as far as, as ethics go, I mean, there's, there's a whole different body of law that addresses conflict of interest issues. Mm -hmm. And I have not been presented with any conflict of interest issues um, to review in any matter, certainly not with respect to um, the town administrator's oversight or day-to-day -day delegation of duties um, and oversight of Board of Health staff. So I am not aware of any ethics violations and I don't see any ethics violations coming strictly from the Board of Health's vote to turn over certain day-to-day -day duties to the full-time town administrator. And as I said, in my opinion, I think it is that the Board's 
vote to turn that and delegate that duties to the Board of Selectmen and through the Town Administrator, I think it's consistent with Chapter 111, and I think it's also consistent with the Town's bylaws. What vote are you talking on? This is, I was given a June 22nd, 2009 Board of Health vote. Have you seen the minutes and have you seen the meeting minutes and the agenda? I don't know that I saw the agendas. I okay. did get copies of the It's not on the meeting minutes, it's not on the agenda, and it's nowhere in the meeting minutes. So I don't know how they can claim that a vote was taken when it is completely. Um, There's nothing on there in, per, in pertaining to that vote. So what we keep coming back to is a 2009 vote that was taken, executive session. Doesn't exist um, anywhere on, pay, on any meeting minutes or documentation. Well, I, I, I thought that we had a whole, um, correct me if I'm wrong, I, hope, I thought we had a whole lineup of emails from Board of Health executive session with the selectmen. Um, well, now you're getting into the municipal uses thing, and I've never, again, I, I, I have not brought that up. Um, my basic so what, me what, is, me what meeting of the minutes are you talking about, then, if we're not talking about the 2009? We're talking about the 2009 vote. That supposedly, the Board of Health took a vote to release managerial duties to the administrator and to the selectmen. Mm -hmm. And this is what we're talking about. There, there is um, no agenda anywhere or no meeting minutes anywhere that reflects such a vote. Again, um, I'd like to move along from this saying that this is just redundant until we can um, get some clarity from the state. I just don't think that this really should be. But isn't that unethic? Isn't that unethics against the sitting board? Why at would that, that time be? versus the unethicalness of this board, where we had nothing to do with it? I mean, it, it, the mass general law is the mass general law. If you go and run outside of the law, it doesn't mean that you're acting inside the law, you're acting outside of the law. You've got to act inside of the general law for it to be correct. You can go out and act outside of the law, but it doesn't mean that it's been backed up or that it's correct. And right now, we've been operating on the outside. There are no, um, there are no meeting minutes anywhere that reflect a vote that we turned over response managerial responsibilities to the selectmen or to the administrator. All right, well, I will go back through the emails. Okay, excuse me, stop. Side two, um, I will go back through the emails because I believe um, um, not only through the emails that we've received copies attached of executive meeting um, with the selectmen, the Board of Health, who was present. Um, I don't know if there's an agenda. I believe that there is an agenda, but I'll tell you what, I'll get a whole packet together for you to take, for you to see where we have everything, and I believe that all these emails have been forward it over or make copies of within your packets. If something's been missed, then I would like to have the opportunity to find it. Um, you know, I'm having a really big problem that this board is monopolizing our own time. But this, right, as I and said you're, before, you're very passionate. You're very passionate about this. And if this is if you are correct, you have legal counsel, you have a complaint in with the Ethics Commission. I don't know how long that takes. Do you I have any idea? That, no, I was told that I would hear back when they were ready. Okay. So with that being said, that's where we're at. I think it's going to be a continue, continuous um, obstacle for this board 
to overcome? I have a question. The, the third item on the agenda, which we're discussing right now, the Board of Health not running under the laws of mass, and, and I wasn't aware, and maybe I missed it, I didn't know that something was brought before the Ethics Commission. I didn't, am I saying that right? July, uh, July 27th, okay, so maybe, I believe that I told you everything. Okay, might have gone over my head. So yeah. I have a question for the council. You're an attorney, so I am not, but I'm going to ask you. I'm asking legal counsel, in your opinion, is the current sitting Board of Health not operating under the Mass General Laws as you understand it? As I stated in my opinion, mm -hmm. I think the Board of Health is operating consistent with Mass General Law and consistent with the town's charter and bylaws. Thank you. Okay. Which has nothing to do with the ethics. Well, we don't have a charter, we just have the bylaws. Thank you for your opinion. <laughs> Thank you. Good. Well, unless you want to... No, I think I'm, I'm You think wonderful. you're good, so I would like to... Um, I'm sorry? I have a question. Certainly. I, I know it's not on the agenda, but my, my assumption is at the end of a meeting or at the beginning of the meeting, the chair may say, does anyone have any other issues? So I just have a question. Help me to understand something. Uh, I received an email uh, earlier this evening. Mm -hmm. This came from our secretary. It's just in regard to the approval of the minutes. It seems things have changed, so I want to make sure that I understand. Yep. In the email from Ms. Marauder, it says, attached to the minutes from August 8th, which was our last meeting two weeks ago. These will not be voted on at tonight's meeting. Right. Okay, that's fine, but they will be voted on September 12th. It goes on to say, any and all minute, ch minute changes must be approved by the board members before they can be revised and presented by voting. Mm -hmm. So are we now, the minutes are going out to all of us. Yes. We, we now have to via email reply all we if we approve them and yep. then the changes are made and then we have to vote on it at another meeting? Or, uh, no, what, what, and, and a typical example of what happened with our July 25th, the minutes were transcribed. They were sent out to everybody. Yeah. Um, one body feels that something is not correctly stated, so therefore we're not voting on them. The um, August 8th was a real, right down cut to the and dry. cut and dry, real simple. Problem is, is that we didn't have a copy of them, um, but here's the new process moving forward. The minutes are created from the tape. They are then sent to me for me to read them. Then I read them, and then they're sent out to each board member, the exact same thing. If there's any changes, I'm usually grammatical. I am really into punctuation and all that good stuff, I promise. Um, I can listen to YouTube all night long to know that the minutes have been transcribed as they are. Sometimes it's inaudible. But then you have to reply all, no, I don't want any changes. I'm good with them as written. Gail will then say, geez, I've got a problem, so now we're going to pass them on. This is a new process that we have had to put into place, a little bit of different how it used to be, just so that we can keep transparency and everybody, it's one for all and all for none. So. Well, it, it seems, it just seems like we're creating, this is my yes, own opinion, we we're creating an extra layer here. I mean, mm -hmm. the secretary, whomever that is, is, is preparing the minutes. They're being sent out to all of us as a board member, Gail, myself, and you, and then we should be voting on them at the next meeting. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, and I'm but not if there are any, ch if, if, if they're not written or transcribed as you remember it to be, or, geez, I didn't say that, someone doesn't have to vote on I mean this we, no, we, we, we vote on a whole host of exactly. issues here so exactly. if, the, if the minutes are being brought to mm -hmm. the next board as they have been for the three years two plus years since I've been here mm -hmm. if I agree with the minutes and I make a motion and Gail McSweeney seconds that motion mm -hmm. and you don't well that's too bad right so I'm not right. sure mm -hmm. so the it seems only, like the, but the only thing with the last correspondence and maybe this is because we are new into procedure and protocol but the only um, 
people that I heard from were from you and myself. I never saw an email from Mr. Fine. Mm -hmm. I did receive the, the secretary. Mm -hmm. But I do believe that the board really needs to be on top of what the other board members are saying. Now, we all agreed that this would be all three board members would say yay or nay mm -hmm. to the secretary. Right, and all we need, right. But yet there were only two, two board members that were in I this responded. last conference. I didn't, I, I didn't CC either one of you. Right, and, and, all, and, and all you have to do is, this is the problem because there's a link missing. Right, yeah. all you have to do is reply all, which we will all be on the list. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. I was just going to ask if I could, could jump in. Sure. It's, it's perfectly fine to send draft minutes out for all of you to review, like if you get your normal packet mm -hmm. or of other materials to review for each meeting. But if you have any changes to it, you should really bring that to the next board meeting. Okay. And should not start engaging in emails that say, well, I don't think we accurately captured the motion on the septic permit or that sort of thing. That you really should save for your next meeting and come back. And you could vote the amendments as a slate, or you could vote them individually. Perhaps you don't agree with all of the offered amendments, but that would be a better way to do it as opposed to engaging in an email exchange. About yes. It. I, I, okay. I would agree, but if, if we got on board of something that you're suggesting, Councillor, so if, if I had some amendments to the meeting, would I just vocalize them at that meeting? Yes. Then, then we would vote. Yes. Okay. It just seems we've created another layer. It was, and it was I know, and the statement, the statement reads verbatim, any and all minute changes must be approved by all board members before they can be revised. Yes. Okay. That's accurate, yes. Which is accurate. And presented for voting and approval at the Board of Health meeting. So what it's doing is, is that we had that exact situation just happen with the July 25th meeting. Mm -hmm. Yes, it seems like another layer, but I think that we have had our meeting minutes are up, sometimes up to eight pages Understand. long. There's a lot of stuff in there. Um, I think that you all have to acknowledge that you've in fact received the minutes, and if anybody has differences, to please forward them on. Tonight I gave you and Gary you did. Uh, my discrepancies with it. Um, I only went to the first page. There were eight pages of that. Uh, I did, uh, as far as typing, it's really rough because I transcribed it right off of the tape recorder. So mm -hmm. I wasn't worried about my punctuation. I was worried about the content of what that is. And this is what I would like you to review. And I am, and okay. as I said, in in when you came back and said that there you had discrepancies, I I wanted to see them, um, because I sat and we have one recorder, we have your recorder, we have WATD's recorder, we've got two cameras on us, we couldn't have more. The only correct me if I'm wrong, but the only legal recording for this meeting is that tape right there. Right. That's that's from which you make your official minutes, correct? Correct. Okay. Right. Could we possibly put on our next meeting just a discussion of how we approve the minutes? Because I'm not looking to to take away an opportunity from any board member in getting the minutes being right. clear. But I'd like to. I'm not saying streamline them. But I'd like to go back to the way we used to do them, or at least. Not to have so much complexity yeah. to the whole situation. So maybe we could put that, discuss I would how like we to make it as simple as, simple as, as possible. possible. Okay. Donna, could we also put on the next agenda as well? Um, the food inspections, we're back into school, we're going back into school time and to see where the food inspections are or have been for the past few months. What's Do you done? want the restaurants, all food, um, or are you just looking at the schools? Um, I, I believe. How have you done this in the past? Have you done it on a quarterly basis? I believe they're done twice a year. They're done twice a year. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so maybe do, everywhere's food is served. So do you want, um, is it a discussion, because we have to be specific, do you want to discuss just the schools? 
Um, I, what I would like to know are what has been inspected for the past six months. Six months, okay. Yep. Because if we're going by, like, by yearly, then mm -hmm. we'll go the past six months, what's right. been inspected. And maybe we could ask the health agent to speak a little bit about Correct. what's going yeah, yep. to yep. bring us up to speed. Yeah. But we're getting back into school season, and these things are these are vital to mm -hmm. what we should be doing at the Board of Health. Exactly. Okay, is there any um, anybody else have anything else to say at this point? Uh, if I could get a motion, um, hearing none, if I could get a motion to um, end this meeting. Sure. It is now 731 by our Board of Health clock. I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. I second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Carolyn, thank you for coming. You're welcome. We appreciate it. Good night.